know anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so in a recent article in the newspaper, folks, it was reported that more males are finding domestic violence reports. However, while that is a positive sign, there are other issues fueling abuse and other matters that we need to talk through. Try and say, oh, we can um, make some headway and fix some things where this matter is concerned. We've got head of the intervention centers, domestic violence intervention centers, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Jacqueline Dillon, joining us now for this discussion. Morning, Good morning. And Good morning. welcome to the you show. To Good to have you. you. So we're making positive gains-ish. Yes. Let's contextualize it a little bit. Yeah. We are um, understanding that men don't normally report incidents of violence. Um, men don't normally show their emotions mm -hmm. in public not even speak about it in public. And so a couple of years back or even a decade ago, you would not have had a man walking in to say, I need some help, help me before things turn violent okay. or help me before somebody die because I don't know how I will respond if this continue in my life. I, I need some help. So what do you think has changed? You say a couple of years ago it wouldn't have happened and they're doing I, it now. I think the message is getting out there. Um, we still need to talk to our men a little bit more. Um, I think as a nation, not just in Jamaica, but we, I think we have marginalized our men from childhood. Mm. We expect our boys to not show their emotion. We expect them not to cry. So when they go through these emotional changes, they have to suck it up in a corner. After a while, everything becomes overwhelming. So the but message is out cry. there. Tugs, you know. tugs it out. Yeah, tough yeah. it out. Be a man. What are we complaining about? I suspect you can't be specific with because you know of the sensitivity of all of this. But what are we as men? What are we complaining about? Is this complaining or reporting? Reporting. Is oh. this physical violence we're talking about or, or what? It's a combination of both physical and emotional. Um it not domestic violence for, for many Jamaicans, we believe that it's a physical violence, you know? That's the end stage. It starts with the name calling, the threats, you know, the go a boy, your belly big like, your head big, your black and ugly, your and, what and, list, and you know. These are from, from wives and, and, and partners uh, we talk. Yeah, about. man, from partners, mothers do it to their sons. Because oftentimes we talk about domestic violence, mm. we talk about intimate partner, but mm -hmm. we seem to forget the family. What and an the important family. point. It you begins make. right in the family. You know, the name calling begins with you know, mothers, you know, women, our mouth is kind of loose and some things come out of it. Right. Makes yes, it DSP dangerous. Yes, Miss Jules said that uh, me did say it. She would have <laughs> run me out of the studio. I can't run DSP out of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I she would have run me. Or disagree, I have more leverage with you. We but but you, you, you are talking about some of the the ways that this manifests, but I see people watching, because it's a culture in a DSP. I see people watching right now and saying, but... If me tell never you say belly big, all that qualifiers, how do you know when it gets to the stage where you need to go and report? When does it qualify as abuse? You see, sometimes we don't understand that what we say hurt. Language hurt. Context. So I have a partner and my partner is saying, You got big you can't do nothing. Better me go look at next man or go look at next woman because you, you, you're not taking care of yourself, your breasts them drop down, you, you, you're not doing this. That's not positive criticism. That's actually beating me down mm -hmm. for how I look now, instead of trying to help me. So if, after a while, it's going to become too much for me. You're always criticizing me. You're always saying this. I'm going to retaliate in another way. It's interesting when you said about words, Sim and I, Sim and I have said this on air, that this thing that I rate my mother, uh, and almost everything she told me was true, almost. But the part about sticks and stones will break your bones, but words won't hurt you. To me, as rubbish that, because sometimes words hurt you well, more than you Well, they say bruises that. heal, right? Yeah. The words never go yeah. no. away. So what do you do? So I come to you Is and I your phone, Desby? No, what, okay. what do you do when, 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 when I come to you as a man and say this is happening? What you tell me? What I must do? So we encourage our men to speak out. So when they come to us, we listen. Our domestic violence intervention centers are staffed by men and women. So the men may come and say, look here, I don't want to talk to no man. I want yeah. to talk to a man. Mm -hmm. I need to hold a reason. So they always have that option of speaking to the men and women. So when they come, we listen. We don't judge. We, the, the atmosphere within the domestic violence centers are such 
that people feel comfortable just as I'm comfortable to come in here and sit down and do an interview. Right. That's how comfortable it is. There's we have enough no centers, by the way. Pardon? We have enough centers. We have 10 domestic violence centers. We have never had enough centers. Mm -hmm. And those just come on stream a year ago. So mm -hmm. what you try to do, one per parish or something like that? What We're trying to do one per division. per division. So in a parish, you may have two. Okay. So, for example, St. Thomas, there's oh. two. Okay. Because of the geographic layout of St. Thomas okay. and the fact that we... We tend to say that St. Thomas is one of those parishes that we have a lot of family violence. Wow. Really? Wow. Yes, it's there. Um, be it sexual assault with family members, that kind of... But the, it is hard to report because many persons who reside in St. Thomas are family members. Wow. But 10 is encouraging in our DSP, I must tell ten you. Is you right say you never have island. enough, but 10 in a year is yeah. very encouraging. Um, what about the training that these officers in the domestic violence centers get? What kind of training oh, do they get to make them equipped to deal with what they're getting? All police officers, they are all staffed by police officers, I should say. Excellent. They are trained, they have specific skill sets. So we try to have persons within the DV centers that have investigative skill set because the domestic violence needs to be um, investigated. We have persons with social work background. Some mm. of them are trained social workers. We have persons with guidance counseling background. So, and every quarter, every three months, four months, we pull our DVI care managers, take them into training, talk about psychology of self, talk about emotional intelligence, oh, talk good. about trauma and domestic violence, all of that. Continuous learning, yeah. to, underpinning. Yes. Question DC, DSP. So if we are having issues and I come, she know that I come, and do you get a chance to speak to both of us uh, together at any time, or I come in secret and I don't want her to know that I come or stuff like that? So if you come in as the as a victim of domestic violence, right. we talk to you first. Right. You will have to say to us, "I need you to speak to both of us together." Okay. We never speak to both parties together because you know, if I'm fearful for you of of you. I will never talk the truth with you sitting next to me. Correct. Right. So we, we interview the complainant first or the victim first to hear the victim's story. And then from there, we ask another question. What do you want? It's always about the survivor-centered approach. Whatever the survivor wants, that's what the survivor gets. So if I want you lock her up, you lock her up? Oh, yeah. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Wow. Whatever you but want, you have to investigate before you lock up. We no? do investigate okay. before. Okay. Sometimes the person who comes to us first is never the victim, you know. And that's why the interview That's why they come to you first. <laughs> is Ex good. To try and change explain, the narrative. Because sometimes you will run to me first when actually you are the one <laughs> who, who started start the beat up. Okay. But you run and come before Simone comes because okay. you know, you want us to think that you are actually the victim when you are not, and that's why the interviews and assessments are important. So important. Okay. Um, okay. So, so we've talked through the men. What's going on with the women? What does stats look like there, and the children? <laughs> For last year, we had eight thousand one hundred and seventy-four repeated cases right across the island in domestic violence. Six thousand, a little bit over six thousand were women. A little bit over two thousand were men. Somewhere two thousand. How does that six thousand look something. year on year? So we see the men are increased in reporting. The men are increasing. In 2021, mm -hmm. we had um, 17, 1,718 men mm -hmm. reporting domestic violence. It's about the women. And the women were same steady numbers. Yeah. So it's always the women who report and I'm, most. I'm, I'm also reading that children, 2,757 yes. children come in. How would they know where to go, the kids? For those who are watching and I guess they can't tell their mother, say, I went go to the police. So how would they know where to go? See, children, they are very, very perceptive. And oftentimes we underestimate mm -hmm. them. When we talk about 2,000 odd children affected, we talk about every instance where we deal with domestic violence. There's always a child that is caught up in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Our first case we had were two children who came to us for help, to, to help their parents. And... Goodly do he came because we know, never know what would have happened. In the end, the gentleman who was the perpetrator said, thank you for helping us because I love my family. I didn't want us to separate, but I don't know how to deal with my, my child's mother's mouth. That breaks Matter my went to heart. Court. Yeah. No child should ever yeah. I didn't want to, to ask this question, that. but I'm going to ask still. How many of these end up in somebody losing their life? 
many of? How many would end up in somebody losing their, their, their after coming to you? We never send a child to any state care like that. Um, I think he means no. how many of the victims yeah. end up dead. We have never had that. Oh, Praise brilliant. Jesus. No person has ever interacted with us. Oh, brilliant. All of the cases of persons who have died, we have never had a report brilliant. prior to death. Brilliant. So you're doing good work. Well, so far, so good. Hopefully, we'll get the support from Jamaicans. Yeah, you know, what do you have, need? What do you need in terms of that support? When you say you need, we the want support? Jamaicans to report. Do not wait until somebody dies. Do not wait until somebody is seriously injured. Yeah. And that is why the JSF is doing. It's part of the reason why, come May 11 to 14, we are doing our Tech Expo under the banner "People, Quality, Technology," mm. and it's a way of inviting Jamaicans to come out and hear more about what we are doing. Yeah. as it relates to medicine, violence prevention and other areas of safety and security. Where do we find the centers? For folks who are watching this morning, we say I need to go and see. So there are 10 centers. Yes. There are two in Kingston <coughs> and St. Andrew, Matilda's Corner, and Constant Spring. We have two in St. Thomas. Um, we have one in Greater Portmore, at Greater Portmore Police Station. Is there a one number that you can reach, all of them? 224-4274. Two, two, four, four, right. two, four. Fantastic. That's two, the number. Four. Yeah. 4274. Right. If you call that number, that's the unit, okay. and we'll direct you to the nearest okay. one. So to nice. You. There's a number on the screen. Thanks for coming, and thank you so You're much welcome. for your service. Thank you. Be safe, you and your family. God bless you. All right. So just do it for me now. All right. Head of the Intervention <laughs> Center's Deputy Superintendent of Police, uh, Jacqueline. Thank you, Dinner. Nev. Come on. After the break, uh, Mr. Brian Samuel shares his memoir in Off the Shelf. Right.